Hi, I'm Harper. Ciao, I'm Eva. One of the Italian traditions that Eva and I have co-opted into our life here in America is the sacred Sunday lunch. Every Sunday we try to cook something special together. Maybe it's something that's a little more complicated, we wouldn't have time to cook over the week, or just something we've been craving for a long time. Today we're having a little trouble agreeing on what to make though. We can make a lasagna. Lasagna again? I love lasagna. Lasagna's great, but once you've had one, you've had them all. In Italy, Arpir, we don't have just the regular lasagna. We have a lot of versions of lasagna. So maybe I can find something around my country that uh, you never had. Okay, well I guess I'm game, as long as you promise they'll be yummy. I have ever cooked something no yummy, Arpir. Mm, not yet. All right, let's go. Works every time. Every time. Okay, I'm gonna guess the name of this lasagna. No, you can't guess. Is this La Lasagna del Amore di Carne? Meat Lover's Lasagna? <laughs> Does that make any sense? So the name of this dish is Vinci's Grassi. And is a kind of lasagna that do in the market. Market region, it's a region in the center of Italy. Mm -hmm. But there are uh, several uh, differences between uh, the lasagna from Bologna and the Vinci's Grassi. The first thing, Harper, is the color of the pasta. Yeah, it doesn't have the, the green pasta that uh, I was surprised to learn about in the Bolognese version. We put inside also the liver, the chicken liver, chicken gizzard. There's like every kind of meat in this. Okay, should we cut into it? I think so, Harper, also because, uh, as always, I'm not starving. <laughs> wow, it smells so good. 
Can you smell the nutmeg, the cloves? I can, yeah, that's true. You did sort of season this in a... Special way. Yeah, yeah. Buon appetito. I don't know where the name comes from, but I know that this Vinci, Vinci's Grassi are amazing. It's very similar in terms of texture and consistency and appearance and everything to just a normal bolognese lasagna. But that ragu with all those different meats, the kind of more earthy taste of like the chicken giblets gives it a very, very different taste. It doesn't seem lasagna because no. it's not a lasagna. <laughs> it also has uh, the fresh pasta, which is just absolutely to die for. If you've never had lasagna, made with fresh pasta. Oh man, I highly recommend it. It will change your life. Super good. And an interesting departure from traditional lasagna. I'm willing to bet though, that you have something even a little more exotic in the lasagna realm. Are you ready?
Before we dig into this rather interesting lasagna, a quick word about today's video sponsor. One of the biggest frustrations that people who use nonstick pans experience is the fact that the nonstick coating usually doesn't last very long. It wears out after a few months and then you have to replace it. Not so with the Misen nonstick pan. Ava and I have used this pan now for a year and it still works just the same as when we first got it. It is truly nonstick, not just semi nonstick, not less stick, it is nonstick. From my breakfast to my dinner, I use really this every day. It works as a real nonstick pan should work. We're so impressed with this pan, we've even started giving it as a gift to our friends and family. Best of all, it's an incredible value. It's affordable, it's high quality, and it's sure to last you many days in the kitchen. Visit the link in the description below and use promo code PASTAGRAMMER for 20% off your first order. Once again, visit the link below and use promo code PASTAGRAMMER for 20% off your first order. And a big thank you to Misen for sponsoring today's video. By the beard of Zeus. <laughs> this is crazy. This looks like the uh, timpano or timbalo we made. Harper, actually, this is a timballo. It is? This is the timballo taremano. This is what, still now in Abruzzo, in Teramo, you find on every table for Christmas. And today is not Christmas, but no. it's on our table. Christmas came early. Yeah, so the one we made before was mostly filled with pasta, but it also had kind of like a dough crust. This is like a... These are what in Abruzzo they call scrippelle. That for all the other people, all the rest of the world uh, is a crap. 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 The French crap. Crepe. 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 <laughs> you know how in Italian, um, like penne is different from penne? You know how those are two very different words? Crap and crepe, kind of the kind of the same thing. I'm hoping it's not made of crap. No, it's made by Scrippelle. <laughs> so let's keep uh, the name from Abruzzo, Scrippelle. I like that. Yeah, that's better. There isn't any kind of bechamel, but there is a mixture that we made with eggs and milk. That was wild. You like poured it down into the into the whole thing. Yes, because that was the liquid to make it uh, softer, to mm. make the, the scrippelle comes together and cook. Let's <laughs> dig in. <laughs> yes, let's. Let's dig in. <laughs> Whoa, nice. Holy smokes. That came out perfect. I think, I assume. I hope. <laughs> I don't see how it could look any better than that. It looks so cool. I hate to even okay, take a bite out of it. Okay, what up so, bon appetito. Bon appetito. I'm actually getting, oh, and you've never had one of these. I should really introduce you. I'm getting sort of like uh, pot pie vibes. What is a pot pie? Okay, well like the most classic is a chicken pot pie. Mm -hmm. It's literally a, a pie, but with um, chicken and what's, what's getting it for me is the peas. Obviously it's with pork, it's not with chicken, but just something about the form and the taste, I'm getting real like, like pot pie memories. It's so good, but in a very, very different way than a lasagna. The layers definitely are reminiscent of a lasagna, but it has a completely different taste. Okay, I understand it's a Christmas dish, but this is also a perfect dish for a picnic. <laughs> like you can probably see, it's a lot less like saucy than a lasagna. So it would actually be a pretty convenient dish to just like cut slices of and people, you could grab one with a napkin, you know, it's, it's, I really can't say enough good things about this dish. I love it a lot. It's also like, it's definitely a project meal. It's not something you do if you just have 20 minutes to make dinner, but it's way easier than the traditional, the re, you know, the timbalo that, that we made a while back. This is definitely much simpler. See, it didn't take uh, 10 hours of cooking. Yeah. It took yeah. just five. <laughs> Not 10 hours, five, but uh, we did it. 
Sarper, I took you to Marche. Mm-hmm. I took you to Abruzzo. Mm-hmm. And we have uh, the last stop to make. Can I actually make a request? I've never done this before. But I, I have a request. But I don't know if I will accept this request. <laughs> so I can make, but it doesn't mean that I will accept. Okay. When we made our previous lasagna video, um, when you first introduced me to the Neapolitan and Bolognese versions, mm -hmm. you said at the time that uh, the lasagna recipe that your family makes is sort of a combination of the two. It's a little bit in between. We've gotten a lot of requests to see that recipe. Would you mind showing us? So you don't want to see the lasagna that I hate for all my life? Mm-hmm. I think the people deserve it. to meet Ava's childhood lasagna. This is the lasagna that made you, huh? This is the lasagna that uh, my dad, uh, Turi, who is uh, at my home, the, pers the person in charge of making the lasagna, made uh, for us uh, since I was a child until... Uh, Your dad made the lasagna at home? My dad is the person in charge of the lasagna. Really? I know your dad cooks, but your mom does most of the cooking. I just sort of assumed Every it was day cooking. Mama Rosa's recipe. Hey, when uh, we request a lasagna, we want a lasagna. My dad... Uh, 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 uh. Daddy steps in. <laughs> Papa, la lasagna. So, yeah, so as, as you've explained before, this is somewhere in between like a Bolognese lasagna and a Neapolitan. So let me see if I can break it down. Let me see if I understood this correctly. So number one, it has fresh pasta, but spinachless fresh pasta. So in that regard, it's sort of in between. It uses kind of a modified Bolognese ragu. So it's not the Neapolitan ragu. It's not quite the Bolognese ragu. So somewhere in between. I've noticed like a lot of the sort of stuffing elements of the Southern lasagna. So like uh, salami, and hard-boiled eggs and all the crumbled cheese and everything and no bechamel like you would have in a bolognese. So yeah, it's definitely... In between. Okay, well I'm excited to see what this hybrid lasagna tastes like. And I'm excited to see if I did a good job. So, Papa, I will tell you, don't worry. Te lo dico, ti chiamo dopo. Mamma mia. That's a lasagna. Oh, I am very excited about this. It's handsome. Oh, Papa, bravo! If my dad was here with us eating this lasagna, for him it's never enough, so he will find that I put not enough parmigiano, not enough pecorino, not enough meat, or not enough egg. My father will say that I made a diet lasagna. <laughs> I know, it's fun, I know. Buon appetito. Buon appetito e papà, grazie. <laughs> papà, I made a good job. 
That's awesome. It's got like the satisfying richness of the Bolognese version, but also kind of the the smokiness that I always tend to find in the in the Neapolitan. And it's also definitely seems kind of easier in a way than both of them to make. Yes, you need to make a ragu, but it's the simpler of the two. It doesn't have the bechamela, so you don't need to make that. So it's actually a relatively simple lasagna to make. See, si, it's like a fast, la, fast lasagna. <laughs> Fast lasagna because anyway it took like three hours so it's fast for a lasagna. I can see why you are the way you are. <laughs> okay, this is dangerous. This is dangerous because I can interpret this uh, in uh, one million of ways. So what does it mean? Guys, we hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We will put links to all of the recipes down below in the video description. So if you try any of these lasagne, let us know. Tag us in a picture on Instagram or Facebook, at Pasta Grammar. While we're sitting in front of this beautiful lasagna made with fresh pasta that Ava made herself, we now have a full guide to making your own fresh pasta at home. So if you want to learn to make pasta at home, go to pastagrammar.com slash guide and check it out. Help support the show. We appreciate it. Until next time, buon appetito, guys. We'll see you real soon. Ciao. Ciao.